The Metis Tech Show. Welcome to the Metis Tech Show, a show for HVAC professionals by HVAC professionals. The Metis Tech Show. BC. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Metis Tech Show. So, how was your travel here? It was okay. It was kind of cold, chilly this morning. I had to call. I had to pick up somebody from uh, from their home this morning because they were having problems with their car. And where, where did you fly in from? Uh, I flew in from Cincinnati. It was straight uh, flight, uh, first uh, class, baby. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. status. <laughs> I, I, I flew in next to the UPS box. <laughs> very cheap ticket. I uh, bet you were tasked around a few times, weren't you? Uh, uh, it's nice being back up in New England from Florida. It's 61 degrees. And I can't find enough jackets. Wow. Speaking so, of New England, what are we having for dinner tonight? Oh, we're going to have some chowder. 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 I like chowder. Stuffed quahogs. You know what stuffed quahog is? I have no idea what that is. Yeah. As, as the Wampanoag say, quahog. Is it? Yeah. It's a clam. It's a hot shell clam. All right. It's got some luguisa in it, Portuguese so, style. No, oh, 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 I like Portuguese food. <laughs> yeah, I come up here at 2.06, I go home at 2.11. And that's pounds, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> I hear that. I feel it. I so, feel it. So listen, what the heck are we talking about today? Well, today we're going to talk about going on a service call. Yeah, let's keep what it short because I'm hungry now. I want to talk about food. What should technicians do when they approach a service call? Uh. And, you know, I tell in my classes, uh, you, you're, the technician is dealing with two problems. One is the equipment problem. The other one is the homeowner problem. Who is always right. And I asked them, who, which one of those two are they good at? And the answer is the equipment problem because that's what they're trained for. But if they don't take time to approach the homeowner and get the symptoms, establish a relationship. You know, I learned a long time ago that the homeowner does not have to like me. But they have to trust me. You know so what, you, you know what, what are I mean? you saying? You're looking at me saying, I have to like you and trust you. Yeah, because you're, you, you look kind of shady <laughs> yeah. across the desk yeah. over here. I'm out of here. But yeah. anyway, yeah, you know, approach the homeowner with no tools. Right. I picture many technicians wearing a backpack full of tools and a set of gauges hanging like a collar and then a recovery machine on their left hand and a vacuum pump on the right approaching the front door and say, okay, miss, where is it? Yep, yep. No relationship building, nothing of that sort. Yeah, it, and they're missing the point. My experience is too, because I've been in a service van quite a few years. I, I, I'd probably get a third of the service call uh, completed just by talking to the customer. What's going on? What's not going on? What did you do? Did you trip any breakers? Did you touch anything? You know, am I the third person you called? Yeah, I mean, where where is the equipment located? Right, right. Um, how old is it? Right. If uh, you know things like that, just engage with the homeowner. Right. So establish that relationship. So once that's done, I I believe we should be looking for blinking lights. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Like w when we do a class, we we bug our equipment. Yes. Isn't it funny how? We say, okay, ready, let's go. Let's do a service call. We'll give them a scenario what the equipment is. And the first thing they do is they go out to the piece of unit and start ripping off the panel. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? Is that what you do at a customer's house? Is that ripping off the panel before you even say hello to them? So, uh, so let's go from that approach. Yeah. Let's go from and that and approach. That's, I love that because the scenario, I tell them the scenario is the homeowner talking to you. You should listen to the homeowner, and that, the scenario, is what allows you to proceed. What would you say? The scenario listen. is what allows you to proceed in the service call. I'm speaking English, right? <laughs> no hablo inglés. Contracto. Contracto. All right. So, yes, we're inside already. Uh, we're looking for a controller, whether it's a handheld or a wall-mounted or a wireless like the MHK2. And, uh, it's, you know, we look for lights. We look for lights at the indoor units first, and then we confirm that there's, uh, whether there's maybe some blinking lights outside, and then we go back inside and turn the system on. And, again, you know, you talk about talking to the customer, and I would ask the customer, did you shut the unit off? Did you shut the disconnect off? Because sometimes I have customers, they tell me, well, the service guy or the installation guy when he was here said, if you got a problem, shut it off and reset it. So, uh, you know, that's another great question to ask them because you may be getting there with it already locked in code, you know, faulted out or in the process of doing that. So, 
Right, and we need to be careful which words to use also. Like I learned a long time ago, um, we refer to a unit uh, making noise. To we me, all make noise. Yeah, to me, noise is a negative. Yeah. So I changed that to sound, which is more, which is better. That unit is making a sound, or is that unit making noise? Which one has? Which one is better in the customer's mind? Like as far as what sounds different or what sounds yes, right? Yes, it may be an yeah, that, was, that was the perplex look you had on right, my face on that right. one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it an objectionable sound? Right. Noise is noise is a negative in in, in a human's mind. Right. So by tweaking the language a little bit, it it it, re, it removed that negativity that the homeowner may have uh, towards the product or towards the issue. They may not have a problem. Right. So by using certain words, we we tend to make it worse. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's good information. That's good information. So the technician goes in, and the first thing he should do, in my opinion, is probably just try to start the equipment after they talk to the customer. Yeah, I think at that point, you know, whether it's a wall mount control or handheld mount control, um, just just talk to the customer, try to start the piece of equipment. And listen for sound or noise, you know, as you just said, uh, you know, it was a very good point on how to explain that or, you know, the difference of the two. And then at that point, you know, look for some sort of, you know, flash code, depending on what type of piece of equipment it is, uh, whether, you know, inside, obviously that's where I'd be first uh, before I approach the outside unit. So, Right. And then, you know, I, I just, and the, the point I was talking about noise and sound is to forget the word noise. Use sound instead is what I, the point I was trying to make. So, yeah, you're inside. You turn the unit on. So you're looking for a controller, right? I am. And what kind, of, what kind of controller might there be? Well, there could be a handheld remote controller or a wall mount. And okay. the wall mounts, we have a couple choices of what type they are. But nevertheless, it's either on the wall or you put it in your hand. Okay. So how, what kind of tools do you need for that? Um, probably just a little bit of knowledge how to run the controller. Yeah, that, that's it. No that's tools, it. no hand tools. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. What if I need to find out more information about that? Here it comes, mylinkdrive.com. Yes. Exactly. And so. you can find that on your tablet or your mobile device. Yeah. And anything and everything you need to know about Mitsubishi is found on mylinkdrive.com. So basically, they're, they're in the house with a handheld or wall mount controller and a tablet or, you know, a computer or a phone. And, and that's, that's probably where they're going to start right there. Right. And then, well, let's say the equipment did start. Okay. What should you do next? Well, I'm probably going to look for, like, some sort of fault, see if it would happen, see if it stops running or intermittently tries to run. And, um, you know, at that point, if I do get a fault code, you know, probably one of my most important tools at that point is mylinkdrive.com. That's right. where That's where I'm going to find the information. And also, in the scenario that there may not be any fault codes right there, it I recommend the guys do a uh, Delta T. Oh, sure, sure. To see if the outdoor unit is running or or where our temperature drop or temperature rise, depending on the mode, uh, it may be. Yeah, that's a lot of quick information with some pretty simple tools. Exactly. You know, that gives you a good idea right there. If you know, if you have a, you know, very low delta T or just you know, it seems like it's just you know recirculating the air, uh, then you know you got a problem. But at least you're engaged in the customer at that point, and and actually you know to some degree make them a part of the service call. You know, educate them. You know, keep, you know, layman's term, just, just tell them what you're looking for. You yeah, know? and once once you find that blinking pattern, that blinking pattern, that fall code, um, you That was need a tough to, thing to say. It was. <laughs> yeah. There was something going through my throat at that moment. <laughs> you know, we could put this uh, on pause and clear our throats. Yeah, I know. You know? That, that was a that Cuban was a frog <laughs> going through. Anyways, so we've got the, the, we've got the, uh, the, the flashing lights. Yeah. So when we go to MyLink Drive... We have to be sure we're looking at the correct chart because one chart is for historical fault codes while another chart is for current fault codes. And a lot of times we may get confused out in the field. We may be looking at the wrong fault code list and leading us through a dark path that we'll never find. In some other cases, some of the product will give us a digital display. But not all of them do. Right. And if, if you have a fault code on the inside, would you have a fault code on the outside? It's on some products you do. Yeah, you have yeah, to look at both. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because many charts will tell you what is the how many blinks are on in the indoor unit, how many blinks are on the outdoor unit, and then specifically tells you what that fault code means. Yeah, and just to, you know, just let people know is that um, you know, especially the service techs out there and stuff like that, everything that you need, we have no secret book. There is no secret book. It's all on mylinkdrive.com. And talking about delta T, delta T is you'll need a thermometer. Okay, all, it's all you need. It's a thermometer. Sure. You run the system. You go, you're at the indoor unit. Okay, you measure the return air temperature. All right, and then you measure the supply air temperature. And you're looking for a split of what? A a, del, a twenty to thirty according to the service. So manual. that's our traditional numbers on all equipment. So nothing's exactly. changed on that. So if you've been doing this since the seventies, like we have, we still look for that same number, twenty degree split minimum. Right. And typically, in, in the cooling mode, the return air temperature will be a higher number than the supply air temperature. What about in heating mode? You do. In the heating mode, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Your return air temperature will be lower than the, your supply. So you do the math, and that's how you find your temperature differential. And, and we in the heating mode, we look for a good 40-degree split. And that simply means the air is coming in at 65 uh, we want it to be coming out at 105. Right. And, and you know, so so we could do that real quick. Uh, I, I actually, you know, technology, I have a little infrared um, um, temperature sensor. I just put it on a vein. And uh, it, it might be a little bit different, but it, only by a couple of degrees. That way I don't have to bring a ladder dirty up the customer's house, things along the lines of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, old school. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, know, like I know you are. Thermometers. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like those laser thermometers. But one thing to keep in mind, the, 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 the thing to remember when you're looking for delta T, that 20 to 30 degree uh, differential. Cool mode, yep. You, you're, look, you're doing it on test mode. Always. Because you never know what the demand is on normal operation, so you can't really verify a 20 to 30 differential on normal operation. And there's a couple different ways we can put things into test mode. Some situations we could put them in with a controller, we could put them in with Kumo Cloud, we got a button we can push. Uh, so that's very important to realize that you have to have it in test mode. All right. And if you are doing some troubleshooting, you really want to take it out of test mode and put it into normal operation. So good point. But, you know, Delta T, you know, it's been around since the beginning. It's going to be around at the end. Yes. And then once you find that bleaking pattern, that full code, then you go to the service manual. And I emphasize unit specific service manual because there's not one service manual for all. Um, and, and that's to find what the problem or what that fault code actually means. Um, the, yeah. the, 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 so go ahead. So, so, so now we're, we, we've established that we got a fault code on the inside. So now we're going to head outside. Uh, you know, I carry a small tool pouch. You know, I mean, everybody's got their own um, compartment they put the tools in. Anyway, so the one thing I'm probably not going to bring out there would be my gauges. Uh, most of the time, you don't need your gauges at all. We right. just we just really use the gauges nowadays. If we are pretty positive that we have a leak in refrigerant, but you can gain a lot of that information. Um, you know, in some controls depending on what they are, depending on what the model of the unit is, you can gain some information from the controllers. But gauges, you know, um, we just don't use them that much anymore. Um, you know, cross-contamination, uh, losing refrigerant. These are considered critical charge refrigerant systems, and that means exactly what it is, critical charge. So go out the side, take a look at the unit, take off the panel, see if you can find a blink and flash code out as well. And once again, Back to mylinkdrive.com. That's where right. the information is. And and then, it, I mean, I love the manuals because they're so clear in, in what process to take. Uh, in some cases, you may have a troubleshooting chart uh, that requires you to answer questions in a yes or no answers. Flow charts, and, my favorite. Absolutely. Yep, my and favorite. Uh, they're fully understood. And then, if, but one thing that I also, that I realized that happened to me is if I skip a step, and I reach to a certain location that says, go back and do something else that I just did five minutes ago, you better go back and do it oh, again. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. what it's trying to tell you is whatever is going on further down is not making sense. So you need to go back and start over again. Yeah, flow chats are nice like that. I like them too. It was one of my favorites. But uh, not always like that. Some things they have you doing things in a different sequence and different way of doing it. Um, but all that critical information, once again, 
Yeah. Look. And and regarding the gauges, I can't. We can't say that enough. Right. Uh, I mean. W- you never need them because you've got Delta T. Delta T checks a refrigerant charge and airflow. Everything. It's all you need to check. Absolutely. So you Absolutely. should never have to use the gauges. And the reason why we don't recommend using gauges is why? Cross-contamination, loss of refrigerant. Absolutely. Uh, you know, once again, cross-contamination could be nitrogen, different type of refrigerant. Uh, it's, just, it's just not, you just don't need to do it. Right. You know, don't need Absolutely. To, unless you really suspect a leak and you see some sort of deposit of oil. Yeah, and then sometimes you may have to, it, 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 if the if the service uh, code, the fault code, requires you to do a voltage test. Yes, another tool that you should have in your toolbox is a good multimeter, okay. one that will allow you to measure voltage, resistance. Um, and then on the resistance side, you need to have one that will allow you to measure at least up to one mega ohm. Uh, I've known the ones, the two meters that I have, both measure up to 40 mega ohms. But on the voltage side, you want individual scale. You don't want to use out of scales uh, because we are dealing with both AC and DC voltage in our circuits. And then the meter, it cannot decide which one to display on your digital display. So you want to, you want to. You want to be able to control specifically what you're checking at that time, uh, whether it's AC or DC. Absolutely. You know, rock you, on, AC yeah, or you, DC. Right. Yeah. You want to set it on the DC scale if you're looking for DC right. voltage, or you want to set it on the AC scale for AC voltage. And let me just say this. On my meter, I have, uh, I call them electronic leads. Uh, they're almost like a needle. Um, they're adjustable or extendable. Uh, typical leads for that meter, just not going to work on a board. Um, yeah, a couple of things they work fine on. S1, S2, things along the line that line voltage coming into the uh, to the lugs. But when you get into those um, um, uh, connectors, you know, very small, very small openings, very small, um, and, and a good set of needle leads work just fine, real cheap, real cheap to get them. Absolutely, and they're great for when you go inside the connectors because you do not have to remove uh, a connector to test. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you don't want to remove any connector with the power into the unit. Why not? Because what does DC positive always follow? Always follows ground. Absolutely. So if you unplug Boom. a plug, exactly, yep. you can either harm yourself or harm the control board right. by yeah. creating a spark. And that's almost a guarantee. You unplug high voltage DC, you're going to lose the board. Yes. So the needle leads will allow you to go inside the connector and look for voltage yep. and so forth. One thing that we need to realize also, Roland, is not every service call that we go on is a problem service call. Uh, explain that a little bit more for well, our fans. Because let's say that uh, at night, for instance, uh, we're in the bedroom, we have a wall-mounted unit, and the system may not be run. The indoor unit may not be running less like a multi-zone, but we hear refrigerant flow through the refrigerant through the line set, but that's, and then the customer complains about hearing sound not necessarily a noise, but they complain about that. But that's not a problem. That's lack of communication between the contractor and the homeowner not explaining on what to expect. And that's a good point because sometimes we have to pull things Mm -hmm. apart, and I think the customer typically thinks that if I'm pulling something apart, there's something wrong. We're looking for something. So, so yeah, that's 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 a very good point you bring up. And then, again, that goes back to that customer relationship, reassuring them, or just at least keeping them update on um, what you're doing and why. Right. You know, and, and if you did have that situation where, like you said, at nighttime you can have refrigerant movement depending on what the system is doing, and explain it to that customer, and that just kind of seals the deal with the customer saying, okay, good, this guy's know what he's doing. He's probably going to go to something else, which would be the outdoor unit, and, and that's what you're going right. to do. And one thing that, that I can share about, because this really happened to me in the field when I was on my own, uh, on my own company, I went on a service call, and the homeowner, um, it, the, the contra- someone else had installed the system, and, but they failed to uh, explain how a inverter system worked versus a single stage on and off type of air conditioning system. Sure, sure. So the system will, on, on a single stage system, the system is going to go on and off. And that's what they've been used to for 20, 30 years. So now you go in with an inverter product, Mitsubishi, and the system runs at a lower capacity, much longer time. What are they thinking? If you don't explain that process, what are they thinking? They think it's going to cost me more because that thing has been running for an hour. 
So that's what you need to spend some time on. And just to just to mirror that follow up on that, I, I had a customer call me one time and said, uh, "I got a service call. My fan my fan motors uh, fan blade is barely running." And I said, "Well, what's the temperature in the house?" Well, it's set at what I got the thermostat or the controller set at. And uh, I was like, okay, so what's the problem? Well, the fan, that fan is not running. I'm telling you right now, it's not running. And I explained to the customer, I said, listen, call me tomorrow. If it's still running fine, just let me know. That system will adjust to the temperature. I said, the reason the fan's running so small, uh, slow, that's the smart system you have. Right. And they were, they were like, oh, oh, okay, I understand that a little bit. And uh, so th- th- that's what you're referring yeah, to. And, and that I'm, stuff happens. And that's special in that scenario. Mm-hmm. They're thinking they've got a problem. But if the controller and the temperature in the room matches what the controller is asking so what's for. What's the problem? There's no problem. There's no problem. So. You know, so it, it, it was kind of nice because also the customer was like, well, you would have come out here and, and told me that. I said, yeah, I would have. And she said, would you have billed me? I said, I have to. Yeah. And she said, well, you just saved me a lot of money. I like you guys. So right. and that's, it that's goes all. to trust. Tr- absolutely. Right? absolutely. Which is the first moment. So in recapping, uh, the first thing to do is to approach the homeowner, get an idea of what's going on. You don't need any tools for this. And then what after you approach the homeowner? Uh, I just uh, ask the scenario what's going on, uh, what, what she is or he is experiencing, uh, or what led up to the specific reason why they called. Now, obviously, a real clear one is that you set the controller for 74 degrees and it's 81 degrees in your, right. in your house in the summertime, or vice versa. In the wintertime, set it for 68 and it's 52. Um, that, that's clear information that there's a problem. Okay. And then it, uh, depending on what we hear... Depends on what we do. Absolutely. You know, we always Absolutely. try to bring the system on first, then go from there. Okay, so the scenario is customer had a problem. Service tech went in there, established communication with the customer, diagnosed a piece of equipment. Let's just say they found out what it was and they were able to fix it. They fix it. What would the service tech do next? Okay, before fixing it, I believe the home, the technician should go to the homeowner and say, Mrs. Jones, this is what I found, and I can fix it. Saying the technician saying I can fix it. What do you think that do to the homeowner? Oh, it's trust. It's Absolutely. Trust. I'm here. I've got what I need to fix it with. I'm going to go ahead and fix it with your approval, and then proceed. And then he fixes it. Then they have fixed the problem. Then they go back. They clean up, button up the equipment, clean up, make sure that all trash that has been created, like when you strip wires, I, I go to many jobs, mm. and I see the insulation on the grass, that's a negative. Absolutely. You don't want to put it. And then you clean up, you you tidy up, and then you go in and you converse with the homeowner. Your system is working properly. And the reason why I know it's working properly, because the Delta T I did not have before, I have now. Yeah. So that's the proof uh, in the pudding. And, you know, one of the things I also do, I always tell that if I'm outside of the condensing unit and things along the lines of that, <clears throat> and I notice shrubbery and plants and leaves, you know, up here in New England, we really, really don't have this in Florida, but you, ha- you have leaves. And uh, I, I do not miss raking them up. But I, I just make the customer aware that they may have some stuff out there that may block the condenser a little bit and that could cause a problem. And it's just, again, it's, it's right from the very beginning. It's just establishing trust. It's doing your job. And... Sounds like a lot of the job is communication. Absolutely. That's what it sounds like to me. And once you stop with that trust, you're not going to have any problems getting paid. Yeah. There's no questioning. You engage the homeowner. You're making part of the process. You present your bill, and they happily write you a check. I'm calling you the next time something breaks down at my house. Any day, buddy. I know I could fix it, but I'd just rather have a nice conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you the difference between noise and sound. Oh, you know. <laughs> All right, so that I think that's it. We've uh, given a lot of uh, information on this and uh, on, on what to do on the service call. Um, love to have you register for class. Love to see you in my class. Love to see you in one of the classes throughout the 11 different schools. Right love on. to see you then. All right, baby. Adios. We'll I'll be back. Hasta la vista. <laughs>